and their objectives are to help enhance the meal service the shelter provides to children and youth who are residents um, and to give, a, give the shelter a steady stream of federal money for a nutritious meal, at, meal service that complements the other services the shelter provides. Okay, so I am going to briefly touch on the types of facilities that typically participate in this program, and then Davion's going to go into that in more depth uh, very soon. So child care centers um, participate, and those include licensed or approved public or private nonprofit child care centers, Head Start programs, and for-profit centers that serve meals to large numbers of children. Um, also family daycare homes, uh, which consist of small groups of children, which would be six or less, that receive non-residential daycare in approved private homes. The next one is after school care programs, um, which are centers in low income areas that provide free snacks to school aged children and youth. Also homeless shelters, um, which really only include emergency shelters that provide residential and food service to homeless children. And then lastly, adult daycare centers, um, which are public, private, nonprofit, and some for-profit adult daycare facilities that provide structured, comprehensive services to functionally impaired non-residential adults. Okay, so um, as for the staff responsible for the child and adult care food program, um, I found, so they have volunteers that help out the program, and I found uh, the method in which they train their staff. So these include um, their eligibility and enrollment criteria. So basically what I went over, they have to be familiar with that. Uh, menu and meal planning requirements for infants, children, and adults, and you know, nutrient requirements. Food safety, um, you know, how to, they're, they're serving at risk population, so they need to know food safety. Um, point of service meal counting and claiming procedures, monthly cost reporting, annual CACFP and civil rights training requirements, regulatory record keeping, um, what to expect during the review process, and then monitoring requirements for owners of multiple sites and or multiple centers. So as mentioned before, the Child and Adult Care Food Program provides the services by reimbursing the, in the institutions mentioned. While the aim of these programs are to improve food and care throughout the country, there are certain populations who benefit directly from the services provided. Children in child daycare centers and homes receive food that are proven to lead to a healthy development for their specific age group. In after school programs, children and teens receive meals as well as a supportive environment that keeps them safe and out of trouble. While some programs focus on homework and tutoring, others may focus on stimulating activities such as drama or chess. Emergency and adult centers also receive payments for food, lowering the cost for nutritious meals. While services for child care centers and homes are reserved for those that provide residential care, with the exception of emergency shelters, are licensed or approved, are public, nonprofit, or for profit. In the daycare centers, the focus is on children most in need. In daycare homes, the focus is on private homes that are in low, low income area as well as children who are most in need. In addition to this, participants must be age 12 years or, or under age 15 years or under if the child is if a child of a migrant worker, mentally or physically disabled at any age, only if the majority are 18 years or older, and age 18 years or under if attendee, if attendee of approved, um, excuse me, emergency shelter. If, attend, if, a, if an attendee of an approved temporary shelter at at-risk or at an at-risk uh, school program. Services for after-school programs are reserved for those that are area eligible. Programs with area eligibility are, loc are located in attendance areas or areas that include a public
public, ele a public elementary, middle, or high school. At least 50% of the total number of children in the school must be eligible for free or reduced price meals under the National School Lunch Program. Services for adult daycare centers are reserved for those that provide services to adults 60 years or older, 60 years and older, or who are functionally impaired. Also for service, also for centers that provide community-based programs, provide non-residential care, and are licensed or approved to provide adult daycare services. So there are two types of programs that I do want to mention. Um, Non-pricing programs, which are described as those um, when participants receive meals for no charge. Money may be accepted in the form of tuition, for example, and this can cover services including support for food service, but no amount is specified for meals or meal time. These meals must be served without discrimination. Pricing programs, compared to non-pricing programs, require participants who do not receive free meals to pay for any meals served either through payment at the time meal is served or through tuition payment. It is noted that eligibility status of each participant must be kept confidential. So participants who are eligible for free or reduced price meals must not be able to be identified by others at meal time or any other time. So these are treasures slides. Um, she's doing the study um, for the child and adult care food program. Uh, so I'm just gonna click through these. She wasn't able to make it today. Any questions? 